So there is obviously a lot more that we can do in Metamorph. Uh, however, this is not the sample that is best suited to showing you other functions in Metamorph. So I am going to change to a live cell sample, and then I will show you how to engage multiple positions, uh, how to extend that to do tiling, how to do time lapses, uh, how to use the autofocus properly during those time lapses, and how to do Z stacks, as well as uh, Z stacks that use uh, the two different modes of changing the Z on this microscope. So that will be in uh, subsequent videos with another kind of sample that I'm going to load now. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to show you now is how to uh, take time lapses and what things you should consider and how to engage the autofocus during these time lapses, which will um, almost inevitably with, be with live cells. So uh, as you can see, what I have here is a single uh, channel image uh, in the Fitzy channel. Um, and so these are nuclei of cells. So how do we acquire a time lapse and what can we do with that time lapse and how do we decide on its parameters? So to acquire a time lapse, we're going to click here where it says time lapse. And this will bring up this panel where we can say how many time points we want, how long we want the experiment to be and what interval we want between the time points. So if we define two of these parameters, the third one will be automatically determined. So for example, if we have three time points and they are spaced apart five minutes, the total duration of the experiment will be 10 minutes. So in this case, we would be taking three time points, one at zero minutes, one at five, one at 10. So let me show you something uh, a little bit more interactive where you can see uh, how a time lapse works more in real time. So I'm going to take 15 points. The interval is going to be one millisecond. Since the interval can't really be one millisecond, it's just going to go as fast as it can. So now if I hit acquire, what's going to happen is it's going to take an image, then take another image, then take another image, and so on and so forth. And so because the exposure is 250 milliseconds, it won't actually be able to go this fast, but it'll go as fast as it possibly can. So let's try that and see. You can see here how it's taking time points. And once it's complete, which will take about 15 seconds, if we look where that ended up, you'll be able to see the following. We now have, uh, this is the latest data set. Uh, we have an ND file called three channel example one. And then we have the 15 different time points here. So if I drag this into Fiji, you will see that now we have effectively a movie. And with these kinds of movies, we can do quick tests, for example, for bleaching. So if I place a small region of interest here by just drawing it and then go to, um, let's see, stacks plot z-axis profile, this will give us a sense of how the intensity of this spot changes as a function of time. Now, this can change because there was bleaching, because there was a change in the expression value, or because it drifted in focus. So whenever you're doing a live cell experiment, you should always try to use the autofocus, specifically the hardware autofocus on the system,